Hello YouTube, welcome back to the Avion blog. So today we're going to have a look at something new. This is the Fluke 117 that you saw on the intro to my Fluke 113 video. Today we're going to have a look at what the functionality of the Fluke 117 True RMS multimeter uh, has, uh, as well as can this meter be used electronics uh, for electronics or is it only an electrical meter as specified by Fluke? Most people will turn around and tell you, hey, it doesn't have microamps, it doesn't have milliamps, you can't use it for electronics. I'm sorry, but this is nonsense. Um, sure, if you're doing high development electronics, your microamps may come in handy and your milliamps may come in handy. But bearing in mind, this thing can still measure down to one milliamp. So for all intents and purposes, it's still quite usable. Now, the catch-20 comes in where people would say, yeah, but micro and milliamps, you have to have it for electronics, really. I do electronic repairs 99% um, of my time. Uh, I've been doing so for the past 20 years, um, down to component level, board level on computers, etc. Uh, probably some of the most advanced electronics you'd have to work on. And the opportunities for me to make use of microamps and milliamps comes around possibly once, twice a year. And mostly, like I say, when I'm developing circuits or measuring current drain on circuits or something like that. But 90% of the time, down to 1 milliamp is more than sufficient for um, electronics repairs, alignments to amplifier stages, etc. So, yeah, you can get away with using a meter such as this Fluke 117 for electronics. Of course you can. My most common used uh, parts of a multimeter would be the diode test used for testing transistors, MOSFETs, diodes, etc. Continuity, resistance, volts DC, volts AC. Those are pretty much my most used functions of a multimeter. So can the Fluke 117 be used uh, as an electronics test meter? Of course it can. Um, in the end of the day, I have multiple meters. So most of my meters, like the Bremen TBM 811, 812, uh, 829, 869, etc., all have microamps and milliamps, of which I hardly use, but they are there. Um, to boot, this specific meter also has a cap capacitance test function, which does come in handy. Um, it's got a few nice little features, but it is a very basic meter. Um, the one reason why I keep a Fluke meter on my bench as opposed to using just my Bremen's the diode test functionality has this distinctive little beep that happens when you test a diode. Just a little beep to let you know, okay, it's red and you can look. If it's continuous, it'll just continuously beep. Um, so straight away, without even always looking at the meter, you can kind of get an indication that the diode's okay. None of the other meters I've used have got that functionality. And for that reason alone, um, that's why I like to keep the Fluke 117 near nearby uh, or at hand when I'm on the workbench. Um, most of the time I just use a Bremen TBM 811 or the 829 for 90% of my work for more accurate stuff, the 869. But um, the Fluke 117 is my move around sort of uh, place in circuit meter for doing a lot of my diagnostics work. So yeah, let's get into a look at the functionality of the Fluke 117 and see what it's all about. Okay, first things first with the Fluke 117. The feel of the meter is very good. Um, it has a nice solid rubber uh, casing despite it being so thin. Um, there are nice sort of uh, probe holders at the back. The information about the startup being on the back is really cool. So you've got power up options, uh, so to say. So basically what happens here, if you look at this, it'll tell you. On power up, if you want to disable the beeper, you push and hold the min max on power up and the beeper will be disabled and so on and so forth. It's got all that functionality over there. As far as the screen goes, it's an um, averagely visible screen. It's not one of the best LCDs that I've seen on a fluke meter, but it gets the job done. It's got a nice little analog bar graph, etc. Um, to, to, to go to volts AC, it's basically the first option, hence why you would hazard a guess that this is an a electrical, electrician's meter. Then to check your frequency of your AC signal, you just push the yellow button to go across to the second function. Then you've got your volts DC. You've got your millivolts, DC and AC. You've got resistance, um, sort of standard functionality. You've got your continuity tester. You've got your diode test capacitance test. Then, of course, you've got amps AC and amps DC. Now, if you look at this, like, for instance, on DC, you can see you can get down to 1 milliamp. 
um, which is good enough. The Volt Alert is something else more for electrical. It's basically a little light. You can set your sensitivity um, with the low, high functionality on the range switch. Um, and it will flash and let you know if you've got live power. I'll show you guys that function shortly. It is nice that it shows you a lead warning uh, when you switch to amps so that you know. And then of course it's also got the low impedance uh, volt check uh, for removing ghost voltage. Not too often used in electronics but a uh, great function nonetheless. So but before we go over to starting to do some measurements I'm going to check the continuity tester on this meter and we're going to see how it performs. This does come with a nice set of fluke silicon leads. Um, it's not the best leads that's, that, that I've seen come from Fluke, but you know what? It does the job quite well, and it is nice and safe. These re leads are rated at 1000 volts CAT3 or 600 volts CAT4, which is more than you need for electronics work. Now, as far as the continuity tester goes, it is a latched meter, so you don't get that scratching sound, and it does seem quite responsive, which is good. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, that's quite nice functionality. So um, let's get this hooked up to some power supplies and just do some resistance measurements and uh, see how this meter performs. I'm just going to move this a little bit so we can see the display a little bit better. And then we're going to go across onto our DC power supply and do a few measurements of DC voltage. So I'm just hooking up the leads off camera, but um, just basically clipping the crocodile leads onto my multimeter. And there you go. At the moment we're sitting at about 5.4 volts as per the power supply. And as you can see the fluke is reading pretty accurate. There's something about fluke meters, they'll always get the, the voltage more or less correct. So let's just crank that up a little bit. So we're sitting at 11.1 .1 on the power supply, 11.09 on the fluke, still looking good. Uh, one thing you will notice is it is a 6,000 count, so at just over 6 volts, we should switch. There we go, so about 6.5 volts, it switches over to a two decimal places, and then we can keep going. Let's just get a voltage of around 12.5, 12.4. Yeah, we got 12.4 on the power supply and we got 12.38 on the meter, still pretty good. Um, slightly less so than it was. Um, we're showing 20 on the power supply, we're showing 19.91 on the meter. So the meter does lose a bit of accuracy on the DC at the higher voltages, but it's still well within its spec. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, we're sitting at 31. 0.5 um, on my on my power supply I'm showing 31.8 so yeah that's pretty close as well um, I'm more or less happy with that uh, we do expect the, the the meter accuracy to be a little bit less accurate considering it is a, a electrician's meter but it's still good for reference check I mean if you're checking a 5.2 volt rail you're gonna know if there's a problem. If you're checking a 30 volt rail, you're gonna know if there's a problem. So this is more than sufficient for getting the job done and it's more than accurate enough for the work as well. So I'm just gonna disconnect the power supply and um, let's uh, take a look at the meter on resistance. First we're gonna to switch to resistance mode. Then we're gonna grab a couple of test resistors out of the pack over here. Uh, I'm, just, I'm not going to go for a whole bunch, but we're going to see how it does with low ohms firstly. And then we're going to see um, how accurate the meter is compared to some of the others. So here we have a, a 1 ohm resistor, and as you can see that's 0 0.9. So that's telling me this meter is actually pretty accurate on low resistance because I know it is a 0 0.92 ohm resistor from the low ohms test that I did. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna get into testing hundreds of different resistance values just to check if it's accurate. You can almost guarantee it's gonna be well within spec. Then we got not one more resistor here. 10K, showing 9.84K. Yeah, still pretty good, happy with that. Now, 
one of the other functions that I like about this meter and the reason why I like fluke meters in general is for testing diodes. So what I'm going to do now, um, I know it's off camera, but I'm going to go to diode test and I'm going to start off with first reversing. We get nothing. And then checking it in forward. Now we should be expecting 0.5 to 0.7. There's 0.0.569. But the reason why I like it is have a listen to that. Can you hear that distinctive? There it is. Beep. To let you know that it's got a reading. Now, if there's a short, it'll let you know with a beep straight away. So, that functionality for me is really great. Especially for testing transistors, MOSFETs, diodes, etc. It lets me get the job done quickly. It's one of the reasons I love fluke multimeters. Um, and it's one of the things that I think if Brayman had to implement then I probably would never use a fluke again but uh, yeah that's for another topic of discussion so that pretty much covers the the continuity, the resistance, the volts DC etc um, it does have millivolts uh, both DC and AC so that's quite nice for doing a lot of work um, and like I say the amps both AC and DC can get down to one milliamp so that's sufficient now the low impedance mode I wouldn't really use too much for electronics unless you're getting ghost induced voltages etc you can maybe make use of that as far as the high low functionality is concerned or the min max um, the, this, the range switch will be for manually ranging the meter the min max function is pretty much going to be used like for example if you select min max Okay, it's basically recording what the maximum value is. So if I go across to a power supply and I measure 12 volts, or 5 volts, whatever the case may be, it's making a note of that. So now if I go min, average, maximum it's showing overload on that range so you can select a different range um, or whatever the case may be for example now it's pretty much on the wrong range so let's just cancel that let's go to uh, 60 volt range and then we're going to select min max and then we do a 12 volt voltage measurement 12.35 volts okay now that is your current max value, if you push the button it will give you your minimum value and it will give you your average over the time that you recorded it. So it's quite a nice function just for doing some, some basic sort of measurements to check if things are changing over time etc. Um, it's basically a, a mini record function. Uh, one more thing about this meter I just want to take a look at, we're going to turn off the lights over here and we're going to have a look at the backlight it's sufficient, it gets the job done, it's good and clean and it's uniform, there's a bit of a hot spot on the left but otherwise I have no problem with that whatsoever um, you saw how I did the manually range, how to manually range the meter that's how you can do it in all your different functionality, no problem at all and um, yeah that pretty much has a basic look at the fluke one more thing we can probably check out is the capacitance um, let's take for example a 4700 microfarad capacitor and I'm not sure if this is within range of this meter or not but I'm going to try a 4700 microfarad and let's see if it can pick it up it might just take a little while to count to there well it looks like it's getting to 4300 microfarads this is an older cap so it may be a little bit worn um, but uh, yeah it's giving me an indication that we are within a certain range from the, the rating of the capacitor so let's try a 1000 microfarad, a brand new capacitor and we just wait for it to count in Uh, we've got 923 microfarads, so that's closest damage to 1000 microfarads. 
So that's pretty good. Again, it gives you a good indication that the capacitor is within its ratings or not. So yeah, that, uh, this meter could probably be used uh, to test um, motor start and run capacitors for compressors, HVAC stuff, as well as um, electronics level stuff. I'm not too sure how low the capacitance goes, but um, I think it should be quite fine for your everyday sort of electronics meter, tinkerer, uh, repair meter, etc. So AC voltages. I'm not even going to worry about um, doing voltages of the 230 volts mains or phase to phase voltages over here because it's going to yield the same results as the Fluke 113 um, which I'm now going to link to that video here so you can see the Fluke 113 in action doing mains and phase to phase voltages. This meter will do exactly the same job. Um, they are for all intents and purposes almost the exact same meter. The only difference is this one the low impedance function is a separate function from everything else, whereas on the 113 you only have one function for that. So, thanks for watching this first look at, uh, well, this brief review of the Fluke 117 True RMS Digital Multimeter. Um, I hope that uh, you guys can take something away from this and maybe um, get off this myth that uh, you have to have microamps and you have to have milliamps functionality in your meter to make sure you are a professional uh, repairer. Don't talk crap. I know many people making use of uh, meters uh, professionally for many years in the radio field and uh, electronics fields, um, doing professional repair work and stuff like that. And their meters have the, maybe have the functionality, but the times that they actually make use of those functionalities is very minimal. Like I said, if you're a tinkerer, you might use the microamps and the milliamps a little bit more than what a professional may use uh, those functions. Um, don't get me wrong, there are times when you have to have them. For example, in process control, where you, you're working with sensors that work with microamps and milliamps, etc. But we're not talking about process control systems and industrial PLC controllers and the likes. We're talking about a basic electronics multimeter for your bench. So yes, the Fluke 117 can uh, fill that need. Um, even more so, the Fluke 117 might be a great primary meter if you've got a secondary meter with micro and milliamp functionality such as the Unity UT61E or uh, one of the other cheaper meters that has that functionality. That would basically give you a pretty reasonably priced Fluke 117 multimeter with all the functionality that you may need across the two. Like I said, the only I'm not a Fluke fanboy. The only function I like on the Fluke meters is that diode test functionality. I love that. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, 90% of my repair work is done with a Bremen TBM811, TBM812, or TBM829. And occasionally I might make use of the TBM869 if I need very precision work. All of those meters have got microamps, milliamps, and air, pretty much everything you've seen on this meter and more. So if you're just starting out in electronics, if you're a hobbyist, will the Fluke 117 work for you as an electronics bench meter? Yes, it will. Um, should it be your only meter? Probably not, because uh, there will come a time when the microamps, milliamps may come in handy. But it's not a end all for, um, it's not an end game. And like I said in the beginning, this meter may not be exactly as accurate as an electronic rated meter, but it's still accurate enough to get repair work done. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, have a good one.